Graphic Audio presents Pearly Gates 1, The Legend of Pearly Gates by William W. Johnstone and J.A. Johnstone. Rachel Gates, the matriarch of the Gates family, walked out to the back porch where her daughter was shelling peas for supper. Esther, go down to the barn and get your brothers. Tell them to come up to the house. Struck by her mother's grave manner, Esther dropped the pan filled with peas onto the back porch. Daddy? Her mother nodded solemnly. I'm afraid so. Go. Go fetch your brothers. One of you boys can go. I think we owe your father that. He wanted so much to make things right with his father, so we can at least let your grandpa know about his death. Reuben still looked uncertain as Rachel glanced across the room. I think Pearly should go look for him. Reuben, you and John have wives to take care of. Pearlie doesn't. So I think he should go. Gates, did you say one of your brothers is named uh, Pearlie? Reuben canted his head to his left at his youngest brother. This here's Pearlie. Pearlie Gates. Now that's a name you ain't likely to forget, and I heard it twice in the last six months. Only the first one was a hell of a lot older than you. Is he kin of yours? All three brothers' faces registered the same sense of shock. Our grandpa. As a matter of fact, we've been trying to find him. Has he settled around Ogallala somewhere? No, he was just passing through here. Nice old feller. Said he was on his way to see the high mountains while they were still there. (laughs) I don't know where he thought they might be going. Did he say where in the mountains he was heading? Oh, well, no, not exactly. But I think he was talking about Colorado, because he was asking about the South Platte River. You know, uh, whether it went to the mountains or should he be on the North Platte. Oh, excuse me, gents. Three Indians were in the process of trying to steal the horses. One was on Buck, who promptly screamed his defiance and launched a stiff-legged dance of the devil and sent the surprised Indian head over heels to land on his back, making short work of the would-be thief's ride. The bay then ran toward his master... The other two Indians had jumped onto the other two horses, but hadn't noticed that their mounts were hobbled. They began flailing and kicking them frantically when they refused to gallop. When the first shot from Pearly's rifle cracked over their heads, it was incentive enough for them to come off the horses. Pearly's second shot inspired them to run for their lives and their own horses, waiting at the foot of the ridge. Pearly followed for a little way until convinced the thieves were not stopping in their escape. To encourage them, he fired one more shot over their heads. Then he gathered the horses and led them back closer to the camp and tied them there. Buck strode up to Pearly and nudged his rider. Pearly glanced at Buck and then back at the departing failed thieves as he rubbed the big bay's neck. Thanks, partner. Young man... We get folks coming and going through here day in and day out. Soldiers, trappers, settlers, Indians. We're not likely to remember any of their names, except maybe those of the men stationed here. Pearlie was not surprised by his answer and started to thank him for his time. But Collins raised his hand to stay Pearlie's thanks. But that's one name I found easy to remember. And I remember the man who wore it. (laughs) I even gave him a bottle of rye whiskey, no charge. He and I talked for half the night, and he was gone the next morning. Pearlie was excited. He had actually struck his grandfather's trail. But before he could speak, Collins was shaking his head in a strange admiration. Pearlie Gates. What's your name, son? Pearlie Gates. Pearlie Gates won. The Legend of Pearly Gates 